Hey everybody, welcome to What the Flick, Alonzo Duraldi, Brett Ehrlich, it's Better Call Saul, Getting Caught Up, uh, Episode 7, Bingo. If you hear a weird song in the background, it's because, hey, pardon our dust, we're building a new studio here at the Young Turk, so, uh, you know, that's also why we're late with this episode, but yeah. deal with it, you got in for free. Uh, let's, <laughs> let's take a look at the, uh, let's take a look at a clip. Wow. It's a clean slate. <laughs> Put the uh, reception desk right here. Uh, get some comfortable seating for the clients. It's big, a lot of offices. Yeah, I like the openness. Feel like I can breathe in here, you know? It's not some claustrophobic little closet that smells like acid's own. <laughs> Room to grow. Dream big, I say. Got a decent sized conference room, not as big as Hamlin's, but you know, it's cozy. Our elderly brethren prefer that, I find. Yeah, could be cozier, though. Maybe you could embroider some little cushions. Crochet a runner for the table. The rocking chairs all around? Yes. Make it look like the front of a Cracker Barrel, huh? <laughs> now you're talking. I want Mrs. Kettleman to be a regular. Yes, I want her all the time. <laughs> I want, I'm in this episode wrapped up with in a, such a way that I think we might not have her again. I know, and I, I miss her already. She's like this great sort of Lady Macbeth of Albuquerque. You wonder how much they've planned out the entire season, I mean, the entire season's moving forward versus mm. what is open to, you know, broadening people's roles and sure. bringing them back based on how well received they are and how popular they are among people watching because she's amazing. Yeah. Just <laughs> someone who completely captures, uh, reminiscent of Lydia, that oh, kind yeah. of uh, type Control A, freak, controlling, yeah. neurotic, um, finds herself leaping into action, moving places before she even thinks right, how right. it might come off in front of other people she's around. And is going to let you know how it's going to be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mr. Kettleman, don't sell his performance short because nope. to be that foil is... Yeah, 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 no, no, it's not easy just to be the cowed guy, but he's, you know, he's very watchable. The two of them together have a fun dynamic, and, and yeah. Um, and it, it's funny, this episode, and I think it, it pops up again in the following one, it's like... Jimmy would be better off in a lot of ways if he were more corrupt. <laughs> yes, absolutely. You're <laughs> he's seeing, too moral for his own good, you know? He's been, you know, he's been down that road of the complete corrupt person. Right, Slim but Jimmy. But he's just not old enough and wise enough to understand his true power. Mm. Maybe he got himself into too much trouble and he's got this moral compass of his brother sure. who is making him feel guilty about it. Yeah. And you wonder, like, that's, that's an interesting dynamic, him and his brother. Oh, totally. Yeah, because, yeah. because you wonder... How much of making Jimmy feel guilty is there to make Chuck feel better? Hmm. True. You yeah. know, but like I, I at least feel that that the whole dynamic is is in service of trying to find like where we are going to see Saul appear. Sure. Yeah. 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 I know. I mean, th this is in a way this is kind of a protracted superhero origin story. Mm -hmm. You know, this is Gotham, except in instead of we're not waiting for Batman, we're waiting for Saul Goodman. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I I enjoy this episode very much. Oh, so great. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, you know, it was just kind of fascinating with it. Uh, by the way, we, we, we promised last time we were going to remember her name. Kim, who Kim. is played by uh, Rhea, uh, and apologies to this actress, because she's awesome and we should be better about this. Is this the daughter-in-law? Who's Kim? Kim, Kim. is the, the, the woman oh, who Kim, works the at the woman, firm. Kim, the woman who works at the firm. Yes. I'm trying to figure out, because we're, we're reviewing two episodes in this, this same day, so I'm trying to remember what's in which I know, that's, it, it, um, it, it does get okay, tricky. Okay, yeah, Kim, we see Kim. Rhea Seahorn. We are fans of Rhea Seahorn. Yeah. She is uh, doing solid work this season. Yeah, we get to see uh, Jimmy taking around to the new office. Yes. Um, and showing around what he hopes to get. Exactly. Um, and it's and so kind within of, his grasp. It really but, is. Ah. Uh, but, and, and he shows her, and, and I, I rewatched the episode because it had been a week, and, mm -hmm. and just seeing like the specific little choices that she makes where it's possible that... You know, in a less awesome show, maybe when he's about to pitch the idea to her of her being a, a partner, right? Uh, she's like caught by surprise. But like, as soon as he's like my partner, she's like, "Oh God, that's why I'm here." Right. <laughs> you know, um, that. But watching Jimmy go through that, his aspiration to be like this above board, awesome guy is exactly what you're talking yeah. about. And he, he to takes, be the guy on the billboard, even though know? the money that he needs in order to launch this new endeavor is something that's that's. Come, gotten by you know it's a bribe. means it's a yeah. total bribe, but he wants to use it you know to he hopes the ends will justify the means. Sure, and sure, and he's been using it obviously to buy the suits and do all the other stuff that's been going on. But yeah, you know he just he he and the thing is he probably in a way could have gotten away with 
busting the Kettleman's and keeping the money. But right. he doesn't, you know, and, and, and part of it is because, you know, he obviously uses the money so that Mike can go in and find out where they're hiding it mm -hmm. uh, by, you know, spraying the fluorescent stuff on it. But I think, but part of it is also he just kind of feels like I can't continue to be party to this. Like, yeah. I, ha I have to give this up. And it's that, it's that grain of a moral center that, you know, like, you, keeps him from competing with the, the, the blue suits of the world. Do you, you know? think that's in him, or do you think that's solely something that's there because of his brother? Like, what is, where, where is the morality coming yeah, from? Where is fancy is, bread? In the heart or in the head? You know, I mean, it's like, I, I don't know if it's, if it's just his own guilt about his own past and trying to redeem himself from that, or the, if, if the fact that the brother is kind of there as a constant sort of Jiminy Cricket, you know, right. conscience for him. Uh, it's hard to say. I mean, that's what's great about this character. There's a, there's a lot of layers going on here. But whatever it is, when, when, it, can, when it comes down to the moment, he just can't, you know, do it. In the same way that... Um, you know, with the the with the the humble figurine lady, you know, like yeah. he he did not couldn't couldn't like take her last you know bit of money or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like he, he's he's he is down deep a stand up guy, um, even though he's also kind of you know a sleazeball at the yeah. same time. Um, <laughs> so another thing that happened in the episode is uh, Saul could very easily do all his his elder law in his. Uh, in his office, right. he could have it in the cramped quarters, but he ends up taking it to his brother's house and just leaving it there. Yeah, knowing that he can't resist, you yeah. know, and and that's that's kind of cool. I mean, that's it's part of the interplay between the two of them. It's not just that that the, the the older brother is sort of the you know like the the the, the moral voice because that gets boring, but you know the idea that that Jimmy knows that he's hungry to 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 be in the game at least a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, and by leaving the stuff in the house, it's a way for him to kind of like. You know, sniff around a bit and be interested, and 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 it, and it's a you know it it's it's almost like a it's a it's almost a therapy technique. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. what I think it is. It's him just being like, listen, I've been messed up before, and my brother, in one way or another, found a way to get me to turn my act around. Right. Now it's on me sure. to find a way to help him because I already was in with the doctor lady, right. and the doctor lady <laughs> kind of convinced me that this is pretty much probably Made in my up. brother's yeah. head. And at the same time, the brother is, you know, also doing the thing where he's leaving the house for 60 seconds and trying to kind of like, you know, build up his tolerance. So even he is making some effort to kind of work his way through this thing. Um, also the opening scene, the opening scene where Mike and Saul are sitting next to each other underneath a, oh, right, a yes. whole wall of wanted posters. <laughs> yes. It's a visually interesting thing. I'm sure a lot of the symbolism flew over my head. I was like, that looks cool. <laughs> but you know, here's against the backdrop of all these criminals right. uh, is the cop and the lawyer. <laughs> um, and, and the scene with the, with the Philadelphia cop was great, yeah. where he's basically saying, like, this isn't going anywhere, and you don't have to worry about it anymore. Right, and but then also the discussion of, like, who's the bad cop? Is the bad cop really the one we hate is the young, The, the white fiery, guy with the, with the notepad, yeah. Yeah, we, we hate that guy. But really, afterwards, we get from the discussion and the discussions in previous episodes mm -hmm. with Mike and his daughter-in-law, and then now Mike and... The you know older cop right. is like, listen, we've done some nasty stuff. Um, some of it is moral in its own way, if not necessarily legal. Sure, but like this guy who's trying to really just enforce the law is who's wrong here. Yeah, um, yeah, no, and and I I think what what's cool about this show is that it completely lives in a gray area. I yeah. think, <laughs> yeah, you know, almost everything that happens, almost every decision that characters make. You're right. It's it's not. It, it might be moral. It might not be. It might not be legal. Mm -hmm. You know. But it it is. It does ultimately come down to someone's active conscience or at least sense of personal justice and morality. Yeah. Uh, I and that's that's probably what I like the most about the show. Yeah. It's like it just lets me all those things that when I'm I'm watching shows and usually it just goes by the law or mm -hmm. by like oh I'm just kind of a. You know, My Robin Hood is enough for me. You yeah. know, like rich to poor. This is something that's just like all those thoughts I have are like, yeah, I wanted to do this. I didn't want to do that. I don't know exactly why. It kind of explores all that. Yeah, and no one's gonna come in at the end and be all, you know, like this is what you know, like they 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 allow it to exist. Like I said, in that gray right. area, those South Park stand <laughs> scenes at the end. It's like, what if we all just sat together and thought good 
<laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. Or that sort of the old kind of Hayes Code thing in the movies where you know the, the everything had to be righted at the end and somebody had to come explain why this is a bad thing. You know. <laughs> so hooray! All right. Uh, join us. Uh, we'll be back very soon with uh, episode eight. <laughs>